Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Damn Fancy Creations, and today we are going to be doing a tutorial on one of my favorite tumblers that I do, and is also one of my most requested for customers. And it's basically just a opal watercolor ink tumbler. It's um, an opal glitter base, and there are different watercolored ink splotches all over the tumbler. Um, I really like this idea because you can, again, switch it up, do the watercolored splotches on different parts of the tumbler. I really want to try to do one where the watercolored ink is just kind of around the center of the tumbler, uh, maybe with pink inks for Valentine's Day. I think that would be really cute. And I am going to be using the Bria Reese inks. I recently got them from Counterculture and I really, really love them. I like them so much better than Tim Holtz. I think the colors are a lot more vibrant. Um, they're similar to the Pinata inks, but I think that I like the colors of the Bria Reese a lot better because they have so many different colors. Um, I bought several packs of pinks and purples and blues. So you can really kind of blend your colors together that way if you want to, because they have so many colors in the same line. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. It's really fun, it's really simple. Again, if you are just a novice tumbler maker, this is definitely something that you can tackle and they always will turn out great and different, which I really love. So if you guys are ready to see how I do my watercolor opal tumblers, Let's get started. So like always, we're going to start with a prepped tumbler spray painted white. I spray paint all of my tumblers white, even if I'm going to spray paint it another color on top. But for this particular tumbler, we are going to leave the base white and we are going to apply a decently thick layer of clear epoxy. I typically mix about 20 milliliters for one cup um, for this cup. I want to apply enough on the cup so that the fine glitter that I'm going to sprinkle on is soaked up by the epoxy and it leaves the top layer a little tacky. That way I can apply the chunky glitter and it will still stick to the tumbler. If you apply too thin of a layer of epoxy, the glitter won't get soaked up by epoxy. And when you go to sprinkle the chunky, then it will not stick to the tumbler because the epoxy will not soak through and be sticky on top. So once we apply our epoxy, we are going to torch all the bubbles out. Um, since this layer is just applying the glitter, it's not imperative that you get every single little bubble out, but you know, it always helps to have a pretty smooth bubble free surface to start with. And I apply my fine glitter with a tea strainer. The tea strainer that I used, I purchased from Walmart and I'm going to be using Snowball Coconut Martini from thedrunkflamingo.com. This is an opal glitter with a pink and blue shift, which is very similar to the chunky glitter I'm going to be using. So both of these glitters work really well together. And I am basically just going to sprinkle a thin layer of the glitter all over the tumbler. Make sure you get your tops and bottoms. And I always start with just a little bit all over the cup. I can always go back and sprinkle a little bit more in places that may need it. But I don't wanna completely cover it so that the um, epoxy doesn't soak up everything that I sprinkle on. So that is pretty much it for the fine glitter. And now I'm going to take my chunky glitter, which is Coconut Cooler from the Drunk Flamingo. 
and I am just going to lightly sprinkle it on. I hold it up pretty high, that way it falls more spread out and less concentrated as if I was holding it directly above the cup. So that way we still see the fine glitter showing through, but we also have that layer of chunky on top, which I love. During this step, also be sure to pat down any chunky glitter that may be sticking up. That way it will just make for an easier epoxy application in our next step. So after our first layer of epoxy has cured, we are going to go back with a second layer of clear epoxy and apply it on top. Again, this is about 20 milliliters um, that you will need. You wanna make sure that it is a decent coat to get all that glitter covered. And I will point out that if you know that the glitter you are using tends to repel epoxy, you may want to spray seal it. I typically don't. Some of my glitter repels epoxy, but usually once I apply another layer of epoxy, everything is covered and good to go. With this layer of epoxy, you want to break out your torch and be sure that you pop those bubbles really well. I usually do one or two spins with the big torch and almost all of my bubbles are popped. After the second layer of epoxy is applied, I am ready to sand the rims. You can either do this with a Dremel or a sanding block. Since it has been pretty cold outside, we are going to use a sanding block for this cup. I usually use 60 or 80 grit. I just place the sanding block at an angle and just sand around the entire cup. This will make the top rim extremely smooth and it will leave about a one to two millimeter stainless rim around the tumbler. So this way when we go to apply another layer of epoxy, we are 100% sure that all of the glitter and everything is sealed in. And I will get my cup a little bit damp, that way that any of the sanding is washed down the drain and not floating in the air. So you guys can see that just a slight, slight stainless rim, and you can always go back and, you know, hit certain parts again if you need to but it gets all the glitter, paint, and epoxy off of that top rim. And don't be worried about getting it even. It's pretty hard to mess it up. My stainless rims are pretty even all the way around, whether I use a Dremel or sanding block. And then we're just going to sand the bottom rim a little bit. You don't wanna to scrub too hard so the glitter doesn't come out. There are just a few little chunky spots that I needed to hit with the sanding block just to make it really smooth. and then I'm going to wash it really well. I do not sand the body of the tumbler because I am going to spray paint spots and I don't want my spray paint to get stuck in the sanding grooves if I have to remove any of it. And the tumbler was pretty smooth anyway, so there's no need to really sand it. Next step is to take the tumbler outside and we are going to use flat white spray paint. I always use flat because it dries quicker. And we are just going to pick some random spots on the tumbler and spray white patches. 
and I kind of stagger them. I do some on the top, some on the bottom. Some are a little bit bigger than others. If you want your bottom of your tumbler to have inks, make sure to spray a little white spot there. And once this dries, we are ready to apply our inks. So basically, we are now going to apply our inks to the white spots on our tumbler. I will use sponges, different inks, and you wanna be sure that you have some alcohol on hand. So I go ahead and open up all of my inks so they are ready to go. And I typically use one sponge for each color. So I'll use one sponge for my pinks, one for my purple, one for my blue. And you basically just squirt on your ink and dab it with your sponge. And I did not like how light this pink was, so I decided to grab another one. The first pink I was using, I believe, was Rose by Bria Reese, and I switched it to Magenta, which was a lot brighter, which I like because when we dilute it with alcohol, it will still have a nice hue. And I will go around the entire cup and apply one color. So I will do all of my pinks first, and I decided to kind of mix the magenta with the lighter pink tone. And you guys can see it just takes a little bit to get um, that good color. So now that I applied all my pinks and was happy with the color, I'm going to move on to the purple. And this was just the regular purple ink from Brie Reese. And I am going to dab it next to the pink and overlap it a little bit so that they kind of blend together already before we even add the alcohol. And also don't forget to get your bottoms if you want the bottom to have a little bit of color on it. So we are just taking our sponge and dabbing little sections. And then we are going to do our last color, which is the blue. I believe this one was Sky Blue, also by Bria Reese. And we are just applying this one right next to the purple. And you guys can see that I do Go ahead and dab it into the purple so that the colors start to blend a little bit. Now that all of our colors are applied, we are going to pour a little bit of alcohol into a little glass jar and go ahead and put the caps back on your ink because you do not want them falling over because it would be a mess. And I am basically just going to take one of the sponges that I used, dip it in alcohol, blot it on my little rag that I have, and then dab it onto the inks. Now, I dab my alcohol onto the cloth first to get most of that alcohol off of my sponge. I don't want so much alcohol on my sponge that it makes the inks run. I just want enough on there to help the colors blend together. And you guys can see that I am focusing a lot on the edges of my colors. I do this because the more alcohol that you blot onto the inks the lighter it makes them so if the lighter that you make your edges it just gives it more of a watercolor feel so the edges are not so dark just like a real watercolor 
spot would be. The middle is always going to be a little bit darker and the edges are going to appear more watered down. And during this step, you can also, you know, change the shape of the watercolored spot. Like you can see, I'm wiping pieces off with the alcohol that I thought maybe were too large or too dark. So you can always change the shape of the spots if you like. And if you want a spot darker, like this particular spot, you just don't really apply alcohol to that <laughs> to that section. Um, I kind of blot around certain spots so that it forces the alcohol to the center of each other, making it a little bit darker than the rest of the spots. So we are basically just going to do this around the entire cup. And don't be afraid of taking too much off. If there is a spot that you may have applied too much alcohol and you know, you don't like how it looks now, you wish it was darker or more colorful, you can always take um, another dot of ink and apply it to get that color back. So I will typically work on blotting my ink spots for about 10 minutes, um, just until I get the colors how I want them. Then I will apply another layer of epoxy. I typically apply a layer of epoxy before I decal, just because the vinyl doesn't stick as well as I would like to the ink layer, or if there's spray paint or other little things, I'd rather just epoxy and then decal. I also do not seal my inks. I have never sealed them. Um, I know some people always seal their inks, which is totally fine. You need to do what works best for you. I know some people use Rust-Oleum two times clear coat. If you wanna use Mod Podge, whatever works best for you. I personally do not seal them, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to seal yours. And once this is finished, Add your decal, epoxy again, and you are finished. And here are some finished pictures, decal and all. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. This is one of my favorite cups to do and one of my customers' favorites to request. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. If you loved this video and learned something new, please be sure to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to catch the next video coming up. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to find my tutorial group on Facebook, which is linked below. Thanks for watching.